You did it. You're here. By clicking on this video, you have made the first step of building video games. You have made the decision to give it a try. And that's all I ask. I guarantee you, once you start building, you're going to get hooked. So before we start coding, let's take a deeper look at Make Code Arcade and why I've chosen it to be the first course on my website. So I teach sixth, seventh, and eighth graders how to build video games, how to do computer coding. And the Make Code course is honestly the most popular one. I have a lot of students who love it, love it, love it. So let me tell you why I love it. First off, if you're already familiar with some basic coding things such as Scratch, um, you will find that there's a lot of similarities here. In my opinion, this is a better um, program though, and I'll tell you more about why in a few moments. So first things first, this is the website. You can get to it by just going to arcade.makecode.com, or you can probably Google search Make Code Arcade, and it should be the first thing that comes up. So Make Code Arcade is designed by Microsoft, and it is pretty easy to use, let's be real. First thing you need to do before you start coding with Make Code Arcade is clicking that little button up there that says sign in. Students sometimes forget that. Don't forget to sign in. By clicking on the sign in button, you will have the option of signing in through a Google account, through a Microsoft account, or through a Clever account. So for those of you who are teachers who might be using this for your students, you probably already have one of those services that your school is using. So they can sign in with their school accounts then. But yeah, Google, Microsoft, or Clever, you can sign in. The reason you want to make sure you're signed in is because Microsoft Make Code Arcade does automatically save your work. If you're not signed in, it won't save your work, and then you may end up accidentally losing something that you worked really hard on, and you definitely don't want that to happen. So always make sure you are signed in. The, the key is to just look in the corner there. If it says sign in, then guess what? You're not signed in, right? If it does, if you are signed in, usually you will see there instead your picture or your initials, something to indicate that you are logged in at this time. But as long as it says sign in, you are not signed in. So always check that first before you start working. Okay, so down below this, we have a little banner here at the top. Uh, this shows us whatever new things Make Code Arcade is working on. They are updating stuff all the time. You will constantly see new and fun things on here that weren't there the last time you checked. As a teacher, I've been teaching with MakeCode for a few years now, and every year they add stuff new, which makes my job even more exciting. So that banner up top is their way of keeping you up to date with the new stuff going on. Right now, the new thing that I really love is this first one here that says multiplayer games. Yes, you can build multiplayer games with MakeCode, and we will get to that eventually. <laughs> Down below this, we have my projects. Let me go ahead and make my picture a little bit smaller. You don't need me to be that big for this whole thing. We have my projects. The my projects is where you will have your saved work. So as you are working, as you are building things, your My Project section will get pretty big. Uh, there's also a button here to import. We'll talk more about that later. So the My Projects is gonna be where you're using most of your stuff to build a brand new project. Of course, you just click that orange button that says New Project. To access your old projects, you will see them here in front of you. I don't show any of mine right now because I am not signed in currently. All right, down below that, we have Skill Maps. If you just want to learn on your own, maybe you don't want to watch a bunch of my videos, or maybe you want to get a little bit ahead. Maybe I haven't been posting videos as quickly as you want me to. So you want to get a little bit ahead on your own. These skill maps are essentially little mini tutorials. They will teach you a lot of the skills you need to build pretty fun games. So they've got a bunch of them in here. Um, the top row is called beginner skill maps for the beginners who are completely new to make code. Below that, they have next level skill maps. I would not suggest jumping into these until you've already have some background into the software. You already have a pretty good idea of how it works. Then the next level skill maps might be a good thing to do for fun. Um, so there's a lot of stuff here that you can check out. They also have some other tutorials here um, for different types of games that you might want to try building. And even one that teaches you how to build some of those multiplayer games we were talking about a second ago. So lots of fun stuff there. Underneath all of the skill maps and tutorials, there are games. So you can actually just play some games if you want to see what kind of stuff you can build with MakeCode. So here are multiplayer games. Multiplayer games can have up to four people playing at the same time. It's a lot of fun to do that. Um, live coding is people that have made videos similar to the videos that I'm going to be making. So there are some that they have on their website. Block games. Block games, again, are games that are pre-built that you can check out. 
You can also look at the code of any of these games, by the way. So for instance, this one right here called Jumpy Platformer is essentially a Mario knockoff. So if you wanted to build your own Mario game and you were really stuck trying to figure out the coding, you could look at their code and hopefully find some tips on it. So by looking at their code, I can play their game and I can see how it was built. It's a lot of code here. So obviously if you're a complete newbie, um, this might be overwhelming for you, but once you get better at coding, this is gonna start making sense when you look at it. Um, on the coding screen that I'm on right now, let me just tell you a little bit about navigating it. Over here on the bottom right corner, there is zoom in and zoom out. So if I wanna see more of the code, zooming out is pretty helpful. As you can tell, there's a lot of code in this program that was already pre-built. Um, if I wanna zoom in, of course, I have the plus sign. If I start coding and I make a mistake, let's say I'm coding and I accidentally just deleted the entire game update, which is a super important piece of code. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I deleted it. Well, good thing there's an undo button right there and I can bring it back. So the way that Make Code Arcade works is you have on the right-hand side of your screen, the block code where you're gonna be doing all your coding. Um, next to that, you have what's called the toolbox. The toolbox is where you grab that code. So you can go here and you can go to the section that you wanna grab code for and you find the blocks that you're looking for. There's a lot here. There's also down in the advanced section, there's some more stuff and there's even extensions, which we will eventually cover in this class, but probably not for a little while. Um, so all the code you need is gonna be found on the left-hand side. This open area is what we refer to as the workspace. This is where we actually do our coding. This is where we piece it together like puzzle pieces, like blocks. That's why it's called block coding. On the left-hand side, this is the simulator. This is where you can actually play the game. So you can play it on the screen. You've got A, B, you've got up, down, left, right. Very simple controls. For any of you old school fans, the controls are very similar to the original uh, Nintendo. You had up, down, left, right, pause, <laughs> select, um, A and B were pretty much the only buttons on the original Nintendo controller. So you've got the simulator on the left-hand side. You've got the code on the right-hand side. Um, let's go back to the main website. I just want to make sure there's nothing else that I was planning on telling you guys that I forgot about. So you've got multiplayer games. You've got block games. There's also JavaScript games. So once you get good at coding, you don't have to limit yourself to block code. In Make Code Arcade, you can also code with JavaScript and with Python. For this course, I'm going to focus on block coding because I'm assuming that most of y'all who are coming to me are beginners. So that's what we're going to be looking at is block coding. Uh, Game Jam has also has fun to play games on there. There's some more live streams where you can watch people build. Community games is fun games to build. The design concept teaches you some simple ideas if you just want to learn some simple lessons. Um, there's some graphics stuff here. I haven't really watched those yet, but I'm assuming they're teaching you how to create those graphics. It's a little bit advanced. Uh, here's some fun ones. The art and craft section shows you things you can do away from the computer. So for instance, if you like building pixel art, it gives some suggestions on how to do that with Legos or with a laser cutter, stencils and things of that nature. Kind of fun little um, offline activities is what we call those, right? Where you're not actually on the computer, you're just building something off the internet. Um, we have some more lessons there. We have some more courses here if you wanted something a little bit more technical. Um, here's the fun part I want to show you, the devices. So one of the reasons I love Make Code Arcade is that it's just fun, easy to use. The other reason I love Make Code Arcade is that anything you make on here, you can take off of Make Code and you can put it on physical devices. Here you can see examples of some of the devices that you can put these games on. There's quite a few of them here. For my class that I teach, we use the GameGo device, which is this one in my hand right here. So any games that my students build, they can put those games on this device and they can play it. And I have about 20 of these in my classroom that we share. And they can, this is a game that I built, um, but I can play it and I can play it just like I did on the simulator a second ago. So this is a great way to test, test our games as we are building them and having a lot of fun doing that. It's one thing to build a game online and play it online. It's a whole other thing when you can actually hold it in your hands and play it. In addition to buying things you can put games on, you can also build things to put your games on. Here's the DIY hardware section. It will show you ways to build stuff with a joy bonnet, makey makey, all sorts of things. There's even an arcade cabinet. 
This is the fun part for me. At our school, about a year after I started teaching Make Code, I can talk to some of the other teachers and we designed and built an arcade cabinet for the school. So our school right now has its own arcade machine that students can play games on that they built. I tell you what, you want to see a student get excited about education? You want to see a student get excited about coding? Put their game on something like that and it'll blow their minds. My students get competitive over it because they know not everybody's game gets to go on the machine. So they get competitive over it and over the only the best games make it onto the machine. And it's so exciting for them when they get to play their game on that machine for the first time. So that's Make Code Arcade. That's a little introduction to the website itself. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start the first lesson now. So I'll be stopping this video and recording that in just a few moments. In lesson one, I'm going to show you guys how to create sprites and backgrounds, but I also have little surprise twists mixed in there. Um, some things at the end of the video, which are going to take your content to the next level. So I hope you join me there.